This is the next laser we're going to do a mod on. It's a CP210V. Got it on eBay right about the end of the year, 2023-2024. A little tip, that's when you want to go buy them because they drop their prices right then. Now, I paid $650 for this, including shipping it to my house. Now it's $1,200 to $1,800. I watch eBay a lot and I notice they always drop right around the new year. When you see that price fall, you better get it because it's going to go up within two weeks. This is the way it came out of the box. The knob for this was missing. The knob for this was missing. I stuck this one here. It actually goes up here. This knob was installed, but it's badly damaged. I put these in just so I could run it. I chucked in a piece of aluminum, I put in a cutter, I put a couple of bolts on just so I could turn these knobs, turned it on, ran it, and it actually cut chips straight out of the box. That's a first for any lathe from eBay. The main benefits of this lathe versus the 7 by 14 this is 4 inches wide, I'll show you in a bit. This is a 5 inch chuck instead of a 4 inch chuck. The speed control, notice I have to turn it almost halfway before it starts to work. It's not very responsive. I'll show you something else. I wrap some tape around the chuck, set it to 375 so I can grab it without hurting myself. Notice when I put pressure on it, it speeds up to 500. Eight. Let go, it slows down. This machine is supposed to come with a servo motor, and we'll find out. And the servo motor usually has RPM compensation, which it does. But it's supposed to maintain the same speed. Instead of slowing down, it's supposed to give it a little bit more power and maintain the same speed. It's not, it's speeding up. So the controls are defective. Did you notice how I couldn't stop the chuck, even at that slow speed? That's a serious plus. 7 by 14s I can grab a hold of the chuck and stop it just like this. I don't even need to use gloves. This is the original motor. Slowest speed. Hundred and thirty. It's real close. Hundred and thirty-four. Can't stop it, speeds up when you grab it. Highest speed, 1,176. It's only 10 RPMs off. That's the low gear range, original motor. Changing the belt from low speed to high speed has turned out to be an absolute nightmare. You'd think that it's a simple adjustment bolt with a lock nut. Well, that would be the case, except for this has to be balanced between the low side and the high side. There's a different position depending on the makeup for the pulley size. The only way to get it the nut in here to loosen it, you have to use an offset wrench because it's, it has to be thin enough to get in there. So I get it loose so I can move it, and this happens. And then I go to try to tighten it, and it can't be tightened because there's a nut in the back somewhere. The belts are, however, pretty good quality. They feel really tough. Something else you might want to notice. See how this is all sloppy? When we take this off, we'll look at that. But so far, there's nothing but slop. No switch, anything. I got this all loosened up. And the belt will work. On the low speed where it was, but I can't even get it on the high speed at all. It won't even go there. And the reason why is because this won't slide far enough this way. Try it again with no belt on the bottom. It'll barely make it with no belt on the bottom. 
that's all the way in. The thing is, there's a big washer on the back that's kind of required that's running into the spindle head so it can't move that way as far enough. This is the washer on the inside. As you see, it stops right there, hitting the spindle head, running into it like that. We're going to cut a flat on this, allowing it to go in there, or we're going to pick a thicker washer. Now on the other end, it's running in, it only go. it only has this much travel, it's running into this case right here. So we're going to cut this case out right here too. The other thing we're going to do is probably weld this in here, because I can't hold that side and tighten the nut on this side at the same time. Plus hold a wrench on this to turn it to the right place. It's three wrenches at once. Maybe two, but not three. So we'll take this pulley off and weld that head so it doesn't turn. Something else you might want to pay attention to. See how small these bearings are? That's a very small bearing to be running that pulley. I made this to replace this. Notice it can travel on both sides farther. It's also much thicker than the washer. This is mild steel soft. This is A2. It's actually a nailed A2 tool steel. I haven't hardened it because it's going to be plenty hard enough considering it's double thick. Then I welded this on here so it won't spin anymore. So this goes through. This is a slide box. And then this is going to go on the other side. Notice it still catches the flat. This, this, this of course goes on here, here, like this. This, instead of the round washer, sits in here like this, thus gaining more travel both sides. I guess I should have cut that back cover a little more. We're going to try it just the way it is. By the way, notice the 110 on the motor. That looks just like the exact same three-quarter horsepower motor that's coming to 550. That looks like the 550 coming out of the 7x14 mini lathe, but it sure did seem to have a lot more power. Put this in here like this. Screw it into this little block here. Get at least twice as thick as that nut. We don't want to pull those through. Okay, so that's the adjustment there. Put this in. Put the flat on the back. Washer and nut. Okay, that seems to work pretty good. Could be better. Okay, now we're going to see if the two belts will go on. Well, it goes on. Barely. Let's tighten the nut because it's going to pull it a little tighter. See if it even gets straight. But it does get straighter. Could be just a little tighter. We'll spin this up. Snug it. loosen the back nut. Notice I'm not fighting anything on the front. It's just falling right into place all by itself. I don't have to worry about that anymore. So, that's a, about a turn and a half on the tensioning nut. Tighten it again. Maybe it's straight. It looks kind of like an optical illusion. Okay, plug it in and we'll give it a quick test, see how it runs. Alright, 
sounds pretty good. Let's do some speed tests and sound tests. Okay, power up. Well, let's see, we're in a high speed belt. Motor switch goes one quarter, one third, one third. One quarter. If we back it up the other way. So, no, that's frying that motor because that motor's got brushes. Motor's got brushes. You can't run it that slow without burning brushes. That's a bad idea. So we'll say slowest speed is 487. That's real accurate. Highest speed is 2137. That's real accurate. The original motor runs pretty darn quiet. I sure like this a lot better. We'll do this again in high speed. Oh! Okay, that's not what I expected to happen. It blew the fuse. That's an acceptable uh, end result. For these knobs, I bought these rotating handles on Amazon. There are uh, five of them for 10 bucks, including shipping. Notice, this is sticky and hard to operate. This is loose, it's flopping up and down. This is loose, but it works pretty good. This needs to be adjusted, we'll clean that up. And this is not too bad. This was a lot tighter now. It feels tight, but it's not too bad. 